Hello and welcome to Ringwood Library's Simple STEM video series. This is our second video and today we are going to make carbon dioxide. And I'm going to tell you right now, you already are making carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is part of the gas that you exhale when you breathe. Um, it is a colorless and odorless gas, but you may say, I see my breath in the winter. Well, in winter, you're actually seeing the other part of what we exhale, which is water. So when the water um, escapes our bodies, our warm bodies, into the cold air, you see the water vapor kind of freeze into a little cloud. Um, so that is what you're seeing in the winter. But carbon dioxide is something that you don't see. Um, let's not confuse carbon dioxide with carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide um, is a very poisonous gas. It is also colorless and odorless. Carbon monoxide um, will form on combustion. So when you start a fire, when your furnace turns on, when you start your um, oven, your stove, um, carbon monoxide is formed. Your home appliances have a way to prevent you from breathing this in until they fail. Um, in which case you really hope that you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home. Carbon monoxide is very dangerous because what it does is that it binds to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is in your blood, it goes throughout your body, and it brings oxygen to all your cells and all your tissues that need oxygen. Um, but if uh, carbon monoxide is binding to the hemoglobin, the oxygen can't. Um, and then those parts of your body will not get the oxygen it needs. And you will start to feel um, kind of flu-like symptoms, um, aches and pains uh, without the fever of flu. Um, so if you feel that and you're in an enclosed house, you might want to go outside and see if you feel better. All right, so enough of carbon monoxide, which isn't fun. Let's talk about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Um, it helps warm the heat, the earth. It keeps warm air in. Um, and unfortunately, now we have so many things on earth that produce carbon dioxide that the, the um, earth is warming up. So we have climate change, global warming. Um, one way that people have thought to combat this problem is to plant more plants because plants need carbon dioxide. Plants use carbon dioxide when they um, produce glucose um, in a process called photosynthesis. So they take carbon dioxide and water and create a sugar, which is the basis for all food that all organisms need. So plants are really special. They need carbon dioxide. Um, the opposite of photosynthesis is respiration. Respiration is what we do when we are breathing, when we inhale and exhale. When we exhale, we are um, producing carbon dioxide. And all organisms do respiration, including plants. Um, we all give off carbon dioxide um, because we are consuming sugar and we break the sugar down into the carbon dioxide and the water that it started with. Uh, so it's a nice little cycle. All right, so all plants do photosynthesis and respiration and produce carbon dioxide, even baby Groot. A little bit more about carbon dioxide. You may have something similar to this at home. It is a carbonator. And what is inside this machine is a canister full of compressed carbon dioxide. And we can put that carbon dioxide into water. All those fizzing bubbles are carbon dioxide. And it's a yummy drink. You may also know carbon, carbon dioxide in the kitchen when you make bread. Uh, if you use yeast to bake bread, 
Um, you put yeast in a, a warm bowl of water with a little bit of sugar and it starts to ferment. So it's a process that's a little bit different than respiration, but it releases carbon dioxide and you will see little bubbles form on top of the, uh, the bowl of yeast. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any yeast at home right now. But I do have, and you probably have in your kitchens, baking soda um, and vinegar. So baking soda is a base and vinegar is an acid and they're probably in your kitchen. You may use it to make salad dressing or bake cookies with. Um, you may also clean with them. That's why I have a humongous bottle of vinegar because I clean with vinegar. Um, and baking soda is a good little abrasive to help clean out grout and stuff like that. Um, and you can combine them also to clean. Um, in these days though, we're looking at disinfecting. Um, some these are, maybe aren't the best for disinfecting. Things like rubbing alcohol and bleach that you may have at home are better for disinfecting. Um, rubbing alcohol is probably best bet because bleach can be a little bit um, caustic to our skin. Um, so rubbing alcohol is good for disinfecting surfaces like doorknobs and uh, faucets and stuff like that. All right, so um, baking soda and vinegar, a base and an acid. Bases and acids are attracted to each other. Um, acids have um, um, a positive charge, bases have a negative charge, and we know that positives and negatives like to attract. Um, and when they come together, a chemical reaction occurs. So, you can do this at home. I would recommend um, not getting too close to it so nothing gets in your eyes. But you can just dump some baking soda. And some vinegar goes in top of it. And all those fizzing bubbles, that's carbon dioxide from the chemical reaction that occurs between baking soda and vinegar. So I encourage you to look at um, the links that we've provided so you can learn a little bit more about the acid and the base, the chemistry happening there, and the actual uh, chemical formulas for this. Um, so thank you and join us next time.